Do you have older HDV camcorders that work great, but the tape drives just finally died? So you looked for external recording devices and have considered one of the more popular brands like the Atomos Ninja Blade that not only records, but also has a built-in video monitor. Then you find out the Ninja will only support HDMI or SDI, and the BNC connector on your camera is actually only outputting composite video. So you look to some older DTE direct-to-edit devices that you may be able to still find on eBay. I have found some that should work with my older Canon XHA1s. Because prices were so high for most DTE recorders, I settled on the used focus enhancement Firestore FS4s. I purchased a focus enhancement Firestore FS4 Pro for about $175 and a standard FS4 for about $150, which had the firmware update that allows it to record to 1440 by 1080 just like my Pro. The only problem with them are they contain older ATA IDE 40 gigabyte hard drives and are really slow and tend to overheat outdoors in the summertime. I had read that people had success in replacing the 40 gigabyte drives with Hitachi 60 gigabyte drives without even upgrading software, just reformatting inside the FS4's graphic user interface. All new devices and DTEs are using SSD drives, so I figured I can convert my SF4s to solid state. After doing some research, I found a compact flash card to 44-pin IDE adapter board. I figured the old IDE drive could not be transferring data faster than about 40 megabytes per second, so I purchased two refurbished SanDisk Extreme 64 gigabyte compact flash cards with transfer rates of 120 megabytes per second UMDA7. There was no use in purchasing the newer faster cards since IDE only has a max transfer rate of 133 megabytes per second. As we disassemble and assemble, I may use shots from either recorder. First, we will remove the battery and then the six main screws. Next, we remove the front end plate and the back end plate. Then we slightly open the bottom end about one quarter of an inch and barely separate the back into two halves. Observe the ribbon and how it is attaching the hard drive to the main board. Now using a flathead screwdriver, approximately five millimeters in width, Pry between the IDE ribbon header and the IDE socket on the main board. Use the area just above the power plug socket. Very little twisting pressure is needed. A clearer example that we will be using later on I will show you now as a guide to removing it. Once the ribbon header is separated from the main board, slowly start lifting the battery compartment up. Be sure to unplug the red clip on the battery cable before turning the battery compartment over. Pay very close attention to how the right side of the ribbon has a black stripe. Remember this, write it down or take a picture. Remove the screws holding the drive bay into the battery housing half. Make a note of exactly how forward the upward turned ribbon header aligns with the channel in the drive bay. Then remove the screws holding the old drive into the bay. Next, remove the IDE ribbon from the old IDE drive. Place the ribbon on the new adapter, making sure that the black stripe is on the right, correct side. Now let's attach the new adapter and cord to the drive bay. We will be using two-sided foam tape. Make sure the upward turn of the IDE ribbon header is in line with the channel in the drive bay. Reinstall the drive bay into the battery housing half. Install screws. 
Turn the battery housing half over and place it on top of the main unit. Reattach the battery cable clips. Lifting the rear portion of the battery housing, notice that the ribbon cable was stretched just enough for you to replug the ribbon header with the 44 pins on the main board. Carefully align and replug the ribbon. Reinstall the six main screws connecting the bottom half to the top half. Replace the battery. Plug the unit back into the Firewire 1394 cord. Power the unit up. It will seem non-responsive at first. Then a message of unknown volume type. Then partition volume. Click the middle button aligning with yes. Let the unit finish partitioning the new drive. After partitioning ends, toggle the full way two times to the right to HDD mode. Toggle down three times to DD drive. Toggle once to the right and then hit the third button aligned with enable. Success will appear in the window. A drive letter with removable disk will appear on your computer screen. That is it. After recording videos, plug in your firewire and turn on the unit. The home page will open up. Toggle two times to the right to HDD mode, then down three times to DD drive. Toggle once to the right and then hit the third button aligned with enable. Success will appear in the window. Your drive letter will appear on the screen with lots of folders. The only one you need to cut and paste is the one with the long number name. It will contain your video files. I experimented with a dual slot flash disk adapter board, but the FS4 would only finish partitioning with one card, not two.